I got a couple of uh, crazy questions for you. Uh, you you have sure. actually told a famous uh, a rat story from Smoky Mountain Wrestling related to primetime Brian Lee. So uh, a yeah. lot of the a lot of the listeners want to know what was the rat scene like in Smoky Mountain and uh, who was the uh, we make fun of the rats because we're figuring like what the hell were Storm and Jericho doing up there? But anyway, um, what was the what was the <laughs> scene like in Smoky Mountain and uh, who was uh, servicing the rats the most as uh, as they say? Well. Okay, when I <clears throat> was the first, uh, I don't know, I, I don't remember how many trips I had been in, maybe two or three or four TVs. Not, no, no, because each TV, no, maybe, I, maybe my second TV before I ran into rats. And uh, because, like I told you, I normally had to go straight home. Right. But at some point, uh, me and my buddy decided, had to stay at the Super 8. And the rats were, I mean, I didn't, the, the boys were all off to themselves. You know, I, I didn't party with any of the guys in Smoky Mountain, you know, um, because I guess they were all off in the room partying with them, you know, partying amongst themselves. But, uh, but I noticed one that there were a lot of uh, women of, questionable character, you know, <laughs> um, um, and, and, and questionable character roaming the halls of the super eight or whatever. I think that's what it's called. It's super eight. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of them had what I call the Walmart ass. Like when you walk into Walmart and you get morbidly obese woman wearing yoga pants, Jesus. you know, so you, and, and like, okay, you know, like they're trying to dress sexy, but they're <laughs> flawed, or or maybe they have they suffer from no pattern baldness, and you know all kinds of. But I realized, oh, these are rats. So um, one night, uh, Jeff and myself decided to do an old trick I used to do on the road when I was a singer or an aspiring rock and roll star, much younger at that time. But um, like you know how hookers will sit in front of a hotel room or stand out in front of a hotel room in the proper district, just so you know, there's something going on. Yes. Um, we, me and Jeff brought a, uh, took a cooler of beer and sat on it in the hallway of the super eight. <laughs> just and with the door open, you know, just to let you know, Hey, come on in. And one of them <laughs> walked up and, and I've told this story before, but it was the first quote unquote rat that we, Made contact with, and she started talking. Hey, you guys party and whatnot? Yeah, sure we do. And I don't remember how it came up. Or no, she she said something about Brian Lee, and we just wanted to kind of make sure she was rat. And she pulled down her pants in the middle of the lobby, and it said prime time, and his name, you know, his gimmick was prime time Brian Lee. <laughs> and I went, wow. So uh, then we invite her in, and. Uh, have we drink beers and you know discuss politics and global warming and things and she leaves and a little while later now again this is the woman that has prime time written on her uh mound right right uh, which right. was shaved which was shaved which was a rarity in the smoky mountain area jesus so so you could read it jesus otherwise it probably wouldn't have. but um <laughs> Yeah, he came banging on the door, and my friend goes, oh, shit, Brian Lee's at the door. And he came around, and he goes, you got some girls in here? And he's, and what are you talking about? And Jeff's looking at me like, I think he might, that might have been his girl, or his rat, or whatever. Right? And uh, he started screaming and yelling and go, looking under the bed and going in the shower and pulling the shower curtain back. And he said, are you, did you buy this beer? Are you, are you honeymooning these rats? Like, I didn't talk about it. again another term that I had not heard honeymooning the rats. And uh, he started screaming, "If you're going to be in this business, you don't honeymoon those fucking rats. You make them buy something for you before you give them the dick." And he, he pointed down. He had this pair of Harley Davidson leather boots on, and it had a tag on it. And he said, "You see this tag hanging there, like many." That bitch bought these for me. And he named a couple of, I know sunglasses, those uh, Corsair sunglasses, 
that bitch bought them for me and she paid for my hotel room. And he just went on and on. And I said, so boys, don't you ever let me catch you in here honeymooning the rats again. And, uh, that, and he walked away. I was like, oh, so he's not really mad at us. He's giving us a life lesson, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but so, but after that, then, then we did honeymoon the rats. I'll tell you that. But the, the rats were, uh, they were amongst the last of the, the few that I ran into then because, you know, we could only really catch them when we were on the, uh, the extended tours, like uh, Thanksgiving, Thunder, and Christmas Chaos. Um, I mean, they, they weren't Hawaiian tropic models, but um, at the same time, that they were probably more fun, you know, because they were conscious. You know, they, they, they knew what their job was and they knew what they were there for. And, uh, uh, you know, if, if you needed anything, they'd supply it for you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> read between the lines everybody they weren't hawaiian tropic models but they were more fun that's the best way to describe it i love it <laughs> well that is true i mean i'm right. probably the only i'm probably the only guy that ever got taken to wrestler's court for honeymooning a rat this happened at wcw a few years later um i was and apparently that was tracy smothers had this book or something he'd written out that had been passed around the locker rooms for years about the, you know, the basic sins and things you don't do and honeymooning a rat was one of them. Uh, so basically, I guess with rats, you're just supposed to hit it and quit it and go. But I guess I was, I honeymooned rats and I'd watch other guys get convicted of honeymooning rats in wrestler's court. For those of you who know what wrestler's court is, but, uh, I actually got acquitted in a wrestler's court. Uh, I was brought up on charges of honeymooning Johnny Grunge's rat. Oh shit. And uh, I think, now, of course, the thing that's fucked up about this story is that all of the uh, prosecution is dead because it was Louis Spicoli, uh, Johnny uh, Johnny Grunge, and Ted Petty, or what was he called in Public Enemy? Uh, Rocky Rock. Rock, Rock. Yeah, they were the prosecution. But the beautiful thing was that um, my star witness was the rat. And the rat put me over because uh, I was a better fuck than Johnny, than Johnny Grunge. And therefore, I wound up acquitted. So that, that was the only time I went to wrestler's court. But uh, and the, the story that she told made a bop. But uh, the, the, rats, the rats were just... Uh, by, by the time I got to WCW, towards the end of my WCW run, um, somebody whose name I won't mention because they're probably married... Uh, said in the old days, you know, the rats wanted to be with the boys. Uh, now the rats are all guys trying to get into the business. You know, so instead of being hounded, hounded by uh, the ladies, you were hounded by guys in the bar when you were trying to talk to the rats, you know, that were trying to uh, get a job. But uh, at Smoky Mountain, it was, uh, they were very rural. I guess you would say, you know, but, but, you know, look, I'm the guy that likes the hooker with the heart of gold, you know? So if, if you're, uh, if you've got a good personality and you're funny and you make me laugh, I'll put up with you for a while. Um, how other people dealt with that. I don't know. But, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, oh, in fact, Smoky Mountain was my first actual wrestling rats. I'd been in wrestling three, four years at that point, but, uh, had not really encountered a ring rat. Until I got Smoky Mountain. There was a first for everything. <laughs> the yeah. fact that it was in Smoky Mountain is, is, is even better. <laughs> yeah, you can't beat that. Oh, man. Uh, so, again, the, the, the quality may have not always been there, but uh, they were uh, very obedient, it sounds like, and uh, did, did their job and were more fun. There you go. Yes, and there, there, was, there was like a mother-daughter combination. There Jesus. Was, there were... And I mean, they were, they, uh, look, a lot of these, these were old school. If you've ever seen uh, God, Susan Sarandon or somebody did a movie uh, about being rock and roll groupies and, and made in Bull Durham, that movie with Kevin Costner. Yeah. Know, where they, I think, I think they called the rats Annie's for baseball, but yes. uh, actually Bull Durham is a great movie about rats. 
It's basically about rats, except for baseball. It, re- it really is. It really is. I, it's a good movie. but uh, And I never made the – back then, obviously, I had no idea what a rat was. But I remember seeing it back in the day. But you're right. It's the same exact thing. Yeah. And so what part of the time, like the, the rats that I would get was – and, and here's the thing. Once you got to WCW, you started getting the philanthropic model rats that would tell everybody, I just want you to know I'm not a whore which is immediately, you know, they are, but you know, they're, you know, they're the pretty girls and all that stuff, but, but they're trying to bang the main eventers, you know? So you would have all the main event, all the main eventers fighting over one girl or trying to, you know, uh, beat on their chest and, you know, you know, do Nash, uh, animal planet games, you know, trying to, to get the one hot girl that was in the Marriott or whatever, but there were still plenty of uh, Smoky Mountain level rats, and they were and to go back to Smoky Mountain was where I should have been. Um, but they were what was cool was you'd run into ones that would they'd talk about guys they'd been with, you know, and they'd they'd be listing these famous names. So sometimes I would choose a rat based on uh, the legend they had been with. 10 years before or whatever, you know, and like and in hopes that they would compare me to, uh, you know, Whitey Caldwell or whatever the hell, you know, I'm, you know, just uh, <laughs> stupid shit like that. 